Apparently we just got near the end, uh, so we're going to try to summarize everything we just went through very briefly. Uh, one, if you that there's two methods of defining a function at random. The first employs using a function to do it for you, which determines or which is constrained uh, by a couple of factors. You have to put these variables into it. The second is you define the probability space in a random value from that probability space, and then that is a lot less constrained. But there's a relationship between the two such that this f is definable by the other means, or by the, the, the second means, um, in a way that isn't intuit that is not intuitively obvious if you do things the first way. Two, uh, that you can define the measure based on that probability space using uh, the equation over here. This u to the g is equal to the inverse of that function multiplied by the measure of your probability space. Uh, or rather, the, yeah, the inverse of that function applied to your range or subset of your range multiplied by the measure for your probability space. So again, that's number two. And three, uh, if your, your function that you're defining uh, is well-behaved enough and if it's isomorphic to this, this self-referencing, uh, I guess, set, then your, uh, I guess, structure here, this ring, is definable as well. So at the end of the day, this, this is going to allow us to, uh, to define this set or, or some subset of this set in a, a way that you can pull functions from it in a, I guess, at least abstract and reliable way. Uh, and that is kind of our goal. So we, we've made it to our goal. We, we can pull functions at random. So now, uh, now that you've kind of got this idea, what, why do we even care about pulling functions at random? What, why is it useful to be able to choose at the same time, uh, in an abstract way, the, both the path and the position along the, that path? Uh, and I will, I guess, just suggest that you know you go out and look at uh, out there into the world and, and find the discussions that are happening. For example in the, the cryptocurrency world uh, involving the uh, definition of a, of a, I guess, a problem it, that binds or that, that can be defined, but where the, the actual work to, to solve the problem has to be defined randomly. I, again, th this is going to go a little bit beyond what they were thinking in the 60s, but this is just one example of where people in practice are choosing functions at random. This is just a kind of formal way of looking at it, and this is going to constrain what's possible, or what are the possible outcomes of that. So that's your food for thought for the day, and the end of our first video. Uh, tune in next uh, video, where we'll discuss another idea uh, again, this is Jeff Cliff, and you're watching 10 Ideas, 50 Years. Hopefully this all went through. Uh, again, if there's any questions, uh, email them in or comment them in. Uh, I'll do my best to explain anything I didn't explain properly. Uh, and uh, if, if this is the sort of thing that interests you, let me know. Uh, we'll, uh, there'll be more more things like this coming.